name is Michael Morris. I'm the superintendent of the Amherst Palm Regional School District. And welcome to a special summer edition of Window into ARPS. Uh, we typically take, uh, don't have interviews or videos in the summer, but this summer we have an uh, exciting new person in our organization that we want to welcome both to the district but also to the larger community. Um, so I'd like to welcome Jean Jones, who's the principal of Amherst Regional High School. It started a couple weeks ago. We're filming this in mid-July. Um, and I want to really thank you for coming on board. We've been thrilled to have you and appreciated you coming even a little early to meet the outgoing eighth graders yes. at their graduation, the last day of school on June 14th, even though you weren't yet moved to the area. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that, and it's been great working with you so far, and I know the community has a lot of interest and uh, with, is interested in connecting with you, understanding and supporting your role at the high school. So welcome. Well, thank you, Dr. Morris. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, it's just been a great experience so far, and the community here in Amherst, which I already knew, uh, would be very welcoming, has really uh, extended themselves to my wife and I, and we are very excited to be here. Great. Thank you. Well, for, for me and the community, please share, uh, I think I've gotten to know you a little more than the rest of the community to date, but please tell me a bit about yourself and your experience as an educator prior to, prior to coming to Amherst. Well, I have over 25 years of experience, uh, mostly in Virginia. Uh, I started my career in uh, Norfolk, Virginia, where I grew up and was raised and, of course, educating the schools there, the Catholic schools there. Uh, but uh, I've also uh, been an administrator as principal in Philadelphia, also Syracuse, and other school districts uh, within the state of Virginia. I started as a social studies teacher, moved up through the ranks as a dean, assistant principal, executive director of high schools, but most of my career has been in the building as a high school principal where I really find my most enjoyment in working with kids, working with parents, and of course uh, our students. So tell, t talk to me a little bit about um, being a high school principal in particular since that's your greatest area of uh, background. What, what, what parts of being a high school principal do you enjoy? What about that age group do you really uh, you know, enjoy working with? Well, that group is very interesting because you have students who are transitioning from middle school, coming in as ninth graders, and then within that four-year period, you see students mature. You see them grow. Uh, you see them make uh, various uh, choices socially as well as uh, athletically uh, in terms of instruction. And you really feel as though that you're that platform for their post-secondary uh, lives, uh, whether it be college, career, world of work. But you really get to see students grow, and that's the, the, the most fun part. Yeah. And, of course, helping students and facilitating that growth so that when they become young adults, they can always say that these years were the best years. Yeah. No, that's that's. That's very inspiring to hear. I went the other way. I went to elementary in my background mm -hmm. experience and, and for similar reasons. And that's one of the nice things about being part of a K-12 to you know, school system, uh, in our case systems, is that you really get to see the growth. And one of the neat things for me is I'm starting to age out of it. But some of the students who were uh, my students when I was principal at Crocker Farm Elementary School walk across the stage Talk about growth, right? <laughs> Last Absolutely. time I saw them, they're 12 years old, and they, you know, for the most part, they walk across the stage at 18, and I can definitely identify with, you know, that how exciting it is to see that kind of self-actualization and self-realization that happens at the high school level. Absolutely. Yeah. So tell me, what interested you in coming to Amherst? Um, you know, I know you talked about your background from being in other states, uh, working in other states, primarily Virginia. What was it about Massachusetts and then Amherst specifically that? you know, uh, made it, this a job you wanted to apply for? Well, I went to Boston University uh, for my undergraduate uh, studies, so I was familiar with the uh, state of Massachusetts. However, when I saw the posting, uh, I was talking with some uh, friends of mine as well as some people I was working with in some co consultation areas, and I was, I went online immediately and saw all the good things that are going on here in Amherst, and I said, this is a place that I would like to be. Uh, the community, the, the uh, schools such as UMass, Amherst uh, College, Mount Holyoke, as well as Hampshire College are all here, Smith. Right. And you see a great consortium of resources yeah. that you have here. And then just looking at the high school and all the great things that are going on there, I said, well, I would like to be a part of that team and also help facilitate and lead uh, what's already going well, enhance that, and move forward. That's great. How have you enjoyed, you know, being in the area for the last couple of weeks so so far? Because um, it's not just a job change; it's also right. a life change for you in terms of where you're living. 
It's been super. Uh, my wife and I have been able to get around the surrounding area yeah. as well as here in the Amherst community. Uh, drove over to Boston, did a little reminiscing oh, from nice. my college days. <laughs> uh, that was uh, kind of neat. We've been there uh, twice. Yeah. I had some good seafood there because <laughs> we're from you know, Tidewater area where seafood is, is, yeah. is huge. <laughs> so uh, we were comparing seafood. So far, I think uh, Massachusetts, New England, I think they uh, have Southern Virginia a little beat right wow, now. Wow, that's, that's so, a surprise. Uh, coming from connoisseurs, we yeah. can definitely say that. <laughs> Uh, also, just getting to meet people here, yeah. uh, just getting to know the community, it's just really been a, a great transition. Uh, one that is a huge one coming from our years in the South, yeah. but definitely it's been uh, very smooth and very uh, easy. Great. Have you been able to meet some of the, I know faculty and staff are generally not in in the summer, although some are for different projects. Have you been able to meet you know, the administrative team mm -hmm. and some of the faculty and staff and perhaps even some families or students so far? Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, I want to say to the administrative team that was there last year, a big thank you, yeah. because there's no question that they held everything together. Yeah. Uh, they kept everything moving. Uh, Dr. Gramacki, uh, Mr. Uh, Talib uh, Sadiq, yeah. Sadiq. <laughs> yeah. I'm learning all my days. I know, you've, you're learning a lot. <laughs> and of course, the deans and so forth, they've all been super and been very helpful. The office staff, making that transition, helping me uh, as we prepare for the opening of school this year. Yeah. Uh, really looking uh, forward to working with them. Teachers have come in, uh, some community members have stopped by, Great. and uh, setting up meetings as I go through my entry plan. Uh, a lot of things that I wanted to do have already occurred. That's great. <laughs> um, so some of it's just been kind of natural. Yeah. But of course, there'll be other things that I've planned within that 90 days that working with the community and meeting other uh, people, groups, so that we can really uh, hit the ground running and mesh very well. well on that topic, uh, what are some of your goals for the start of the school year, which is, uh, it's hard because we're feels like we're in the beginning of summer, but really we're about you know six, seven weeks out from the, this taping for when our students will return and, and our staff and faculty return a little before that. What are some of the goals that you have to start the year off with a, in a positive way? Well, I think one is really uh, developing those relationships with our staff and with our students and with our parents. Yeah. Uh, being visible, yeah. that's uh, key. And getting in the classrooms every day. My goal is to be in a series of classes throughout the day, throughout different departments, having the teachers see me, of course, meeting the students, and seeing the flow of instruction at um, Amherst. Uh, one of the things that I'm very curious to see is how do students grow and how do they learn? And how can we continue to enhance that, improve upon it as needed, but really to see how well students are working. One of the things that stood out both in your comment there, but also as I recall the interview uh, process this spring, was your real commitment to high quality instruction for all students. And can you talk a little bit about that? Where did that come from? Is that part of why you became an educator and in the first place um, as a social studies teacher? Um, but it, it's come through every time we have conversations or I've heard you talk to others, that real um, kind of laser focus on high quality instruction. I'd love to hear you talk a little bit about that. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I was very fortunate to be mentored by uh, educators who had a, put a high price on uh, instructional leadership. Uh, they had the managerial duties of being a leader, being right. a principal, which happened every day. Right. But when you look at who you are in education, you know, people say, well, Gene, you're a principal. Yes, that's my position, but I'm also an educator always have been, always, I'm always a teacher at heart. So that, I was very lucky to learn from some really good people in my formative years in Norfolk, uh, my principal mentors that I had over the years who put a high price on protecting instruction and instructional leadership and what to look for in a classroom and making sure that students had equitable opportunities during their instructional time that they could uh, improve. Yeah. So it's just been ingrained in me from the time I began to now, and I just continue to use that. And also, I learn uh, different uh, learning strategies and different ways of looking at data so that we can see how students improve and grow. Yeah. So talk a little bit about that. What, what does a high-quality classroom look like? So when you walk into a classroom, 
what does that look like that, you know, when you leave, you say, that knocked my socks off? That is outstanding. What does that look like? Well, you want to see a high level of student engagement. You want to see where the teacher is not just talking to the kids, but acts more as a facilitator, where you see students working together in groups, particularly with 21st century education. It's more grouping and working together and not so much individually. Also incorporating uh, the use of technology. As of course here, I uh, know that students will have access to Chromebooks. Right. So it's more of a blended learning approach where you see different modalities of teaching, of students working together, and also being innovative with students who are uh, English language learners, uh, students with special needs, and seeing how we in incorporate all of that into a classroom where you see an engaged learner. When I come into a classroom and if I walk in and I see a student uh, working together in a group or maybe a small individual project, if I can ask them, what is it that you're learning? How do you know if you're doing good work? What type of uh, uh, work are you doing? And when a student can articulate that and can tell you is in terms of how if they know that they're doing good work, well, that is feedback from the teacher. Uh, when they can articulate exactly what they're doing and the reason why they're doing it, that's because they've been engaged and it's relevant to maybe some real-world applications. And that's what it's all about. So when you see that in the classroom and you see that the standards are being met within uh, the curriculum and you can see that planning has been done and the level of gradual release of the I do, we do, you do model, yeah. where you see less of I do of the teacher but more of you and we do of teacher and student working together and engagement and you hear that what I call uh, good classroom noise yeah. <laughs> because you hear the excitement going on right. and you can hear students talking and having an accountable talk with each other, then you know you've seen a great lesson and those students can come out and tell you, I've learned this today and I may not have known it when I first walked in, but as I walk out, I know something a little bit more than I did the day before. Thank you very much. Um, that's the classrooms we want to have, right? Uh, I always worry when the pin drop classrooms, right? Unless it's MCAS <laughs> time, you know, learning has to be that active experience. Absolutely. So I appreciate that. Um, so you've spoken so positively about being in classrooms and that you have to manage them, you know, there's managerial parts of the job. So what motivates you, what motivated you originally and continues to, to take on the challenging environment of running dynamic, you know, reasonably large size high schools? I know both in your past experience, ours isn't so large, but mm -hmm. um, that, you know, one of the things that I always find is when you drive by the high school early in the morning, there's cars there. When you drive by late at night, there's still cars there. There's so many activities going on at all hours, whether it's um, dramatic activities, the arts, music, um, alternative learning experiences that we have in our schools, as well as the early birds who get there, uh, you know, quite a, quite a bit before the students mm -hmm. start. So, you know, I don't want to make it, it's not an impossible job, but it's a challenging job to be managing, you know, such a complex dynamic environment. So for you, what's the motivation? Where does it come from? Because it's really challenging work. It's a passion. Yeah. It's a passion that you have to work with students and see them grow. And it's also that challenge of taking what uh, needs to be done and looking at your strengths and accentuating on them yeah. and taking your challenges and saying, okay, what is it that we can do to make this better? And how can we make it better for all of our students? And that challenge is what drives me every day. When I come into work, I can't wait to get there because I can't wait to see what's going to happen good today. And even if it's a challenge, how we will adapt and overcome on that challenge and move forward. And then at the end of the day, you sit back and you say, we got it done. Yeah. And then you see a student who is really excited when they leave and they come up to you and say, Mr. Jones, I had a good day today. That's, that's the price in, in, in right there. Everything else is relative. So that's what we try to do every day is make ourselves better, meet the students where they are, take them to the next level. And if you come in with that enthusiasm, and you come in with that excitement, and you come in with that passion, a school like Amherst Regional High School can become what I consider uh, a great school, but even greater that we could be one of the top schools in the nation. Yeah, thank you. 
Do you remember much of your high school experience and, and having that same feeling that you describe on the part of students? I'm just wondering if some of that comes from your own experience as a student. It does. Uh, I was very fortunate to go to a school by, by the same population number uh, as Amherst. Yeah. Uh, I had some great teachers. Yeah. Uh, some who became my mentors when I became uh, oh, an educator. <laughs> uh, really, one was uh, instrumental in me getting my first job. Wow. Uh, he called me in Boston and said, Gene, we got an opening here. Do you want to come uh, for the interview? I said, yes. Right. The next thing I know, I had a job. Right. Uh, because he said, I see something in you that you can work with kids and you have that energy. Uh, relationships that were built uh, over the years, uh, friendships. And just the experiences of, you know, really kind of coming out of a shell because I could be, when I was younger, kind of a little bit quiet. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I said, I want to run for student office, student government. And when I won, I said, oh boy, <laughs> uh, I won. <laughs> but it was doing those activities yeah. of being involved with the key club, of course, playing athletics, yeah. uh, ran track, and of course, played basketball. And because of that, it... You know, I uh, met a lot of good friends yeah. over the years who are still my friends to this day. Yeah. And I feel the same way, you know, I think back to my entry into becoming an educator and, and certainly I had some experience um, working with children uh, before becoming for more formally an educator. But I think back about my high school experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you noted, you know, I was also uh, played athletics and I was involved in other extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's so not dynamic about the high school is it's not we do stress on what happens between 7.45 and, and a bit after 2 o'clock in terms of what happens in the classrooms, but the high school experience is much broader than that mm -hmm. for our students and the ability to create a community that um, understands all those different features and all the opportunities and then can take advantage and have access to all those opportunities that our high schools offer. It's, it's, uh, it's both uh, inspiring and can be daunting. You know, yes, um, it can. For, for our students as well, uh, entering that environment because there's so much potential and yet you know, they are adolescents, yes. you know, and we want to make sure they feel supported to be able to take those risks that we want them to take. So Absolutely. thank you for sharing that. What are some of your hobbies and interests away from work? I know you work, you know, <laughs> uh, quite a number of hours, but, um, you know, what, what's in something interesting the community might, might not know about you in terms of your interests, not during the work day? Well, I'm a huge uh, bike enthusiast. Okay. I like to uh, ride my bike and my wife kind of gets on me because I don't ride on trails. I ride the street. Okay. I've uh, been doing that for a number of years. Uh, sometimes, you know, 18, 20 miles round trip. Uh, um, hopefully, once everything gets settled here, at least three times a week. Yep. Uh, also, uh, we both love going to jazz concerts and okay. uh, particularly outdoor jazz concerts yep. in the summer. Yep. And I like doing uh, little projects around the house. Yeah. Uh, been so far doing several projects around the house <laughs> with our moving to our new home here, yeah. but uh, pretty much uh, being with family, yeah. uh, traveling uh, as we can. Yeah. But those are some of the things that we like. But I would say definitely uh, bike riding. Uh, my wife says, "Okay, he's on that bike again. I know he's going somewhere." <laughs> and of course, uh, going out to the jazz concerts and. Uh, we try to get to several during the summer, yeah. and uh, we found some venues here in the okay. uh, area that we're going to try out. That's great. And if people want to get in touch with you, they're watching this and they're saying, hey, I'd either, you know, something about the school or I know this jazz concert that yes. guy might like, right? Yeah, absolutely. What would be the best way for them to get in touch with you? Uh, you can, of course, email me. Yeah. Uh, call the main office and... Uh, my secretary uh, will be able to make a meeting schedule. Nice. And of course, right now, I'm just I'm there every day. Yeah. <laughs> so please feel free to drop in. Right. If you want to come in and just say hi, or we want to schedule a meeting to maybe talk more in depth about something and tell me about all the great things that are going on here in Amherst. Yeah. At the same time, share my ideas. Right. And then uh, working together, uh, we can really have a great community, a great school at Amherst Regional High School. Thank you. And, and your email address, if I'm not, if I'm correct, is okay. do you want to Jones say it? Jones G. Great. At ARPS. Dot org. Well done. Got I've it. learned that already. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know your inbox has not been uh, has not been shy. Let's no, say, no. Um, but absolutely no. That's great. Anything else you'd like to share with the the Greater Amherst community who may be watching this? Well, I just like to say I'm excited to be here. Uh, can't wait to get started. Uh, can't wait to meet people as the school year starts. And on day one and successive days afterwards, 
If you see this tall guy standing in front of the school greeting students, it's me. <laughs> Even in wintertime, I have my winter coat on yeah. with my cup of coffee saying, come on in. And of course, we won't I'm tell you about in. winter yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I know it's kind of cold. It brings back your old Boston Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Well, we're thrilled to have you. Appreciate you coming on this show today and appreciate all the work you're doing, um, getting hitting the ground running over at the high school. So thank you. Thank you. And thanks to you, the viewers, for coming to uh, watch our episode. We'll be back in the fall with our more regular series. We hope you have a wonderful summer. Thank you.